Hey guys, Gio here, working with Mr. Caesar again, and today we are focusing all our efforts on that place behavior that we were talking about. He has now decided that the couch is his room, so to speak, and specifically working with the excitement that is involved with the doors. So we are working on really maintaining that calmness and he is choosing all on his own to stay in that place there's one thing that he's learned to do is to make things easier for himself um he knows we're not a fan of the crazy hyperactive activity um so he is choosing to be over there so what taylor's doing is she's got him on a long run so i'm gonna walk walk over there and show you exactly what is going on i'm closing your door there we go so we've got him on a long line and he has the ability to get up, um, but he also has the choice to lay down if he'd like. What we're doing is just messing with each of these triggers. Now, if there's one area that we know that it's just a little, um, definitely cr always crazy coming in is the back door. So we're actually working with all the doors, you know, hey, it doesn't matter what door someone comes in, um, you probably should just go to your place. And that's really what we're trying to reinforce here. What we would like to see is less of that energy altogether, which is something that we'll work on next time. Really um, teaching him that energy is not appropriate, period. Because he's gotten pretty good about the um, not initially jumping so much, uh, but it's the zoomies indoors that is what ends up leading to the jumping. So we want to see that go away. But for the time being, what we're working on is him just making the right choice anytime a door is involved, which is being right here on this spot can be fairly simple to reinforce basically just make sure he's on this spot before anybody comes in including yourselves that can be difficult if you are the only person working on it at the time so that means that you're probably just limited to the side or back door but it is in fact possible so if you are working on you entering particular doors maybe not the front door but just the back and the side making sure that he is on this spot before you actually come in and if he leaves that spot don't come in also messing with the varying degrees of how distracting a door can be. Um, there's a lot of sounds that tend to be very triggering. Um, literally, this door in particular and the side door in particular, they sometimes they sound like freedom. And so we want to make sure that he doesn't get triggered and make a bad choice just because he hears something. I have it very wide open right now. And again, he's on a long line. You know, Taylor's not holding him in place. She's standing there so that he can make a proper decision. But you can see right here, he just kind of made the wrong choice. And so that's why he's on a long line so that he can't get past us. This allows us to instruct him at a farther distance. Um, gives you the illusion of more freedom without the threat of him getting away from you. So right here, he's getting a little distracted, keeps pulling towards the door. And Taylor's just looking for him to make the right choice. What could you possibly do right now that would be smarter than going towards the front door? And that is... She's trying to see if he'll do it on his own. Eventually he will, because he does naturally gravitate over here. And we're just reinforcing, hey, this is the smarter choice, not lunging towards doors. Using right here, actual chicken, real roasted chicken. And uh, this is a really good treat to have to reinforce his very hard, these very hard triggers. Having him stay in the place is hard, but having him actually choose to go to the place when the trigger is being messed with even harder, which is why I freed him just now. I want him to do that again. Um, yeah, I'm doing it again so you can see how, how hard it is. Just now, it took him a few seconds to realize that I wanted him to actually go back to the place when Gio started messing with those really hard triggers. So what we, we, we want him to do, something crazy is going on, the door is opening, one of the doors are opening. We want him to think, okay, what should I do? Instead of going to one door and bolting, I'm going to choose to go here instead. It is possible he's doing it. Just take some practice. <laughs> so again, she's going ahead and releasing him. You know, we're acting like <laughs> he got caught, got stuck. Yeah. Releasing him, you know, pretending that this is just normal. That, yeah. not okay. Yeah, leave it. He sees that the door is open. It's hard. So that's why, again, that's why he's on a long line. Because he's still working. We know that if he was given the opportunity to go, he would choose to do so. There we go. He's getting tired. Put your whole body in Basically, we're just teaching him, like, look, you're not going to be able to win at that. But you will win if you choose to go over to that spot. So I'm going to switch doors so we can see this is a little bit closer. 
All right, keep them, keep them released before I mess with them. All right, I'm working with the side door. Let me see if he will. Really cool, and I'm quick and intriguing when he sees this thing where he doesn't go through the door and he just stares at it. The staring is not good enough for me. He's not leaving if he's staring hard at it. So I'm waiting for him to look at the trigger, acknowledge it, but then also look away or potentially just, just ignore it like he's doing right now. Yes, I have treats, but treats didn't matter at first. It took the training for the treats to matter if it makes any sense. Messing with the door, seeing if he's going to make a better choice than hump yes, down. Oh Good. Boy. Taylor clicked oh for him looking away, so being less yeah. fixated on the actual door. The door is open now. Now, we know that you work with this door a lot, so this one is a little more conditioned to, I guess, listen to the rules with, because this is probably the door that you predominantly work with. But that also means that you sh anything that you are working with at the other doors, you should be working. If, this, if you're working with this door mostly, do the same type of training with the other doors as well so that he understands that rules mean rules no matter what door it is, including the back door. Probably most importantly the back door because all that energy coming from the backyard coming inside is probably um, the most unacceptable, you know, all that zoomy energy. So right here he's kind of inching forward. He thinks he's a little slick. Taylor's trying to signal to him while she's sitting down. What's a smarter choice that you can make right now? Not that tired. We just... He's getting a little tired, a little resistant. Did you freak yourself out earlier? Really? You being chicken boy? The door is wide open right now. Oh Taylor's just encouraging him to get up on the couch. He's struggling just a little bit. He got stuck earlier, so I think it kind of freaked him out. Mm -hmm. There we go. Very good. And what Taylor just did there was she just kind of shaped the behavior that she wanted. So she didn't say anything, but she's signaling to him like, hey, do this thing that we were just doing. We don't want to repeat ourselves. We don't want to, you know, continuously yell at him or tell him what to do. The whole point of this exercise is to get him to figure it out on, figure it out on his own. But again, having him on that long line still gives us the safety that we need. So in the event that, you know, working with the door, he decides, man, I'm going to try my luck. He's not going to get away from you because he's connected to a very long leash. Again, opening this door. He's doing really good with this distractions. Release him. We're going to tell him he's free. We want to reset. And doing this one more time with this side door now that he is off of that spot. See the type of reaction that we'll get. He sees Taylor's got the chicken. This door is wide open. Again, I know that you work with this door a lot, which is why he's more likely to listen to the rules with this door. So anything that you've been doing with this door in particular, try it out with the back door and the front door and any other door, even bedroom doors. Um, see if he will figure it out with all doors involved so that it's not just specific to the side door. Um, he understands that it's everything across the board. Doors wide open again. And I'm just looking to see if he's going to offer that... Uh, Place behavior again. We're going up to his room, which would be the couch. He does. He gets way more than one trick, so. um, trick that. He's just kind of standing and staring, which is a clear indicator that he's really, really tired, which we know he is. He was playing outside earlier. So Taylor's just kind of inching over. He just got an itch. Hey, Caesar. Can you go to your room? Caesar, leave it. Come here, Caesar. What'd you say? Oh my goodness, you good boy. You good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. 
There we go. Caesar, you good boy this way. You good boy this way. Can you leave it? You can. Oh my goodness. There we go. So right then, getting tired, he was about to make the wrong choice. So what Taylor did there was just made it herself really exciting, giving him a reason to listen to her instead of this side door. So again, we're looking for him to make choices on his own. We're not looking to use the leash in terms of manipulating what he's doing. So he is tethered for the sake of safety, but not for the sake of getting him to listen to us. In the events that he isn't listening, we switch gears and we start, you know, being really exciting, trying other things. The biggest thing is, you know, don't give up. Um, but yeah, he's doing really good today. Um, next time we're going to focus on, you know, that energy level, seeing if we can calm down some of that zooming inside, seeing if he'll offer a sit instead of the crazy zooms. Um, so work on that a little bit more, but all in all, he did really good today. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, keep working on what you can. Uh, most of the doors, I think a doors working on each of the doors with what you have been working on, um, including the front door will be a really good goal uh, for you to do. It should be fairly simple since you are already um, pretty accustomed to, you know, him staying and doing things by the doors. So, um, yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.